There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some of the uses of named radioisotopes. This video is actually quite similar because the dot point says describe the way in which the above named industrial and medical radioisotopes are used and explain their uses in terms of their properties. So what we have to do is two things. We have to be able to um, describe describe the way in which the above named radioisotopes are used. So again, there's more the uses of these radioisotopes, but also explain their use in terms of their properties. So why are they used? Well, how do the properties of these different radioisotopes allow us to use them in this certain way when it comes to industrial or medical um, usage? So I'll go over the first one, which was cobalt-60. Uh, cobalt-60 emits beta and gamma radiation. So when it decays and goes from cobalt-60 to, um, to something else, it will emit beta and gamma radiation, so beta and gamma radiation. And it has a half-life of five years, which means that half of it will have decayed in five years. But what I'll show you now is a quick video of how dangerous cobalt-60 is and how you need to take quite good care when it comes to dealing with a cobalt-60. And then I'll go over like, how these properties allow us to use it in industrial an in industrial sense. This blue glow in the water comes from radioactivity emitted from the cobalt-60 and notice the precautions at the Department of Atomic Energy's facility. Special robotic arms are used to touch cobalt-60. A glass window, almost two meters thick. Not just that, the glass is impregnated with lead to block any radioactive leaks. Six feet behind this glass is a highly radioactive form of cobalt. That cobalt, which goes on to treat cancer patients and also helps sterilize disposable syringes. So cobalt 60, right here, emits this really strong gamma radiation, which just happens because it decays. And obviously it's, it's all sealed up, everything is in a very safe place. But if there are flaws, which in this case these black areas are meant to be the flaws, if there are flaws in the actual metal, that means this gamma radiation can penetrate. If we are perfect metal, these would not be able to penetrate. Right? So because there are flaws, it can go all the way through, it can penetrate through the metal. And because gamma radiation will actually turn a film badge, which is used, remember, from the identifying detection of radiation videos, film badges was one of the actual instruments which was used to detect radiation. So if this radiation, which is in yellow, comes through, it will actually hit the film badge and turn this film badge in different colors. So for example, it might turn it from blue into red. And then the people monitoring this metal can see it turn a different color, change color, which means if it's changed color, that means flaws are present because otherwise it wouldn't have been able to penetrate and this film badge would not have been able to turn change its color from blue to red. It's, I mean, the actual color change is not from blue to red, but that was just to give you a good visualization of it. Now, other properties, it has similar properties to other metals, which means we can actually have it in metal form, which is good because that's solid form and allows us to just move it to different places. But combination of it having properties similar to metals and it emitting this gamma radiation is useful for being able to um, detect flaws in, in the actual instruments or metal casings, whatever it is. And the other uses, which are prevent food spoilage and also to sterilize medical equipment. These two uses are also there because of this gamma radiation. This gamma radiation is so strong, it can simply kill all the pathogens or the bacteria. So it kills pathogens. So what I mean by pathogens is just bacteria. So because the gamma radiation, you can just use it to kill pathogens and bacteria. That means it can prevent food spoilage because food spoilage happens because of bacteria. And it can also sterilize medical equipment because if it's unsterilized, that means there's lots of bacteria on it. This is how the actual properties of gamma radiation and cobalt 60 are used to um, be able to use it in detection of flaws, 
prevent food spoilage and sterilization of medical, medical equipment. Now, technetium-99, this was the medical, so the medical radioisotope. And it was used because it also, well, the thing is, it also emits gamma radiation, but that's not the main reason, main property of why it's useful. One of the main properties is that it has a very short half-life. Remember, I wrote in this M in red and the short in red, and the reason why is because this M means meta half-life. Usually, it would actually take many hundreds of, hundreds of years for technetium-99 to decay. But it has a very short half-life because it's not technetium-99, it's technetium-99M, which has a short half-life of six hours. So if you put it on body, we don't want to stay, it to stay there for many hundreds of years. So a property that makes it useful is that it actually has only six hours that it lasts in our body as opposed to hundreds of, of hours. So we get rid of it quite quickly as well. It also emits a photon. So it emits a photon. And that photon is perfect for producing good scanning images. So it's actually used a lot for scanning and detecting for problems when it comes to the body, organs, or anything else. And this photon, which is just a light beam, this photon that is emitted whenever there is uh, gamma radiation, this allows it to be able to scan. So the scanning part happens because of the actual photons. What I mean by this is you can see here this picture over here. That's the scanning part. So this is our photons that have emitted. And when we scan, we can see it clearly. We can see the organs and see if they're healthy. That's because um, technetium-99 emits these photons which are visible. Also, the gamma radiation itself is quite weak. Cobalt-60 has gamma radiation that's very strong, so gamma radiation for cobalt is very strong, whereas for technetium-99 it's quite weak. And we don't want to have very strong gamma radiation in our body, because that would be a problem. So it's non-deadly, which is a good property when it comes to using it in medical purposes, especially in our body, because otherwise it would kill us. And it flows well in circulation or in the circulatory system. And it forms compounds. So it flows well in the circulatory system, allows us to be able to check our blood, our bloodstream. And because it forms compounds in different organs, so for example, this might be the heart, I think, actually, the heart here. There we can make it, we can have it be there for a couple of hours, and we can see if everything is shaped well. So for example, there's two pictures here. This might be the ideal. And this is sort of disease, a disease kind of scan. And this, you know, this shape here is, we can see that because it's formed compounds in the heart itself. Here's also formed compounds, but because these areas might be, you know, there might be a tumor or something else here. So it can't form compounds right there because there's something space taken away. And that gives a scan, which is not ideal. I'm going to show you a quick video that was sums up bits of this as well. And then I'll just cover the, the actual uses um, of Technetium 99. As German medical scientist Paul Ehrlich's magic bullet offered a chemical cure against spirochete pathogens, Technetium 99 has provided magical medical imagery capabilities to help diagnose and save lives in modern medicine. Technetium 99 is a perfect but perishable radioactive isotope, which is used for imaging of lungs, bone, heart, renal flow, brain, and much more. It currently is produced within the intense neutron fields of nuclear reactors using highly enriched uranium-235. So again, technetium-99 was used to detect health of organs. And it was also used to sort of monitor or detect problems when it comes to the blood flow monitor blood flow. And the reason why it was a good radioisotope was because we could use it to produce scanning images because of those photons. But overall, it was, had a short half-life, which meant that we can get rid of it quite quickly. And also, it was non-deadly, which is useful because we don't want to have a deadly radioisotope in our body. And cobalt 60 was useful because it was very strong, so it would have gone through this metal. But only if there were flaws there. And also, it has similar properties to metals which means we can move it around to everywhere we want to move it as well. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.